Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, well, welcome back if you joined us last night. Um, this is day two of my Ableton live training. Uh, two of three, so we've got another day tomorrow. Um, if you're just joining us for the first time tonight, welcome. You're more than welcome. Um, yeah, so just a little bit about me then. My name's Pezza, uh, and I make music. I'm a music producer, and I DJ, uh, and I've been using Ableton for, I'd say, around 30... 30 well. I'd say around, uh, in the last 10 years, I've been using Ableton predominantly above anything else. I've been making music for the last sort of 30 years, so Ableton's a massive part of my setup now. Uh, hi there, Amo, how you doing? Uh, just to let you guys know, I've got comments going on and I can see the comments, so if, you, if you're watching and you're kind of lurking around, just give yourself, give me a, a hello, let me know you're around and what you're up to. I'll just uh, get Amo up there, he always gives me a nice little wave. How you doing, mate? You all right? Um, Ammo joined us last night as well. So last night we, we talked about uh, the interface of Ableton 
and and what we tried to do last night is just familiarise ourselves with the interface. Uh, th these sessions are really aimed at people who, uh, uh, who are just kind of getting to grips with Ableton. Um, but you know, even if you're kind of used to it, you might pick up stuff that that you've not thought of before or the way that I use it. Um, there's a million and one ways you can use Ableton and, and there's no right or wrong way. I think the, the beauty about Ableton is that whoever uses it ends up finding their own style anyway. Um, so the way I'm going to try and uh, put my way across is exactly that, it's, it's how I use it. Um, so having used it for such a long time, you kind of you're honing on your own techniques and your own ways of using Ableton, so that's kind of how I'm going to try and put things across, really. Uh, so yeah, last night we looked at the interface. Um, pretty basic stuff, really, and, and the difference between clip view and arrangement view. We can kind of skim over a few of those things tonight as well. Um, we started talking about the browser last night, but I think the browser needs a little bit more explaining, so I'm going to just touch on that when we start in a sec. Um, so we've got a bit of a refresher on that and there's a few things that I missed out so I want to go over those things as well tonight and then we're going to move on to programming so um, tonight's session is going to be about MIDI um, if, if, if you're kind of new to, to production there's there's two ways of working with Ableton really there's there's you can program things with MIDI or you can use uh, audio clips uh, and it's a beautiful way of putting the two things together and keeping in sync and keeping in time. So tomorrow night is going to be about working with audio. Tonight is going to be about working with MIDI. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to touch on tonight. And just to explain again, I explained this last night. Although I know all this stuff behind me and I know Ableton, I'm, I'm kind of using loads of uh, streaming software and different cameras and mics and stuff. So if at any point I do start to fumble, and kind of lose my way a little bit, please bear with me. I will try and get back on track as quick as possible, but invariably there's bound to be a little bit of a, a fumble or a mistake here or there. Just bear with me. I will be back back with you. But, yeah, there's quite a lot to work uh, to, a lot to work with here. So, yeah, I'll do my best. Um, so, yeah, getting back onto Ableton. Uh, oh, and before we do that, keep the comments coming as well because although I'm kind of working with Ableton on my screen, I can still, I've got the, the comments in the corner. So if you do want to ask a question while I'm working, by all means do. And if I don't answer it there and then, uh, I'll do my best to kind of get back to it or, or scroll back and we'll, we'll cover what you need to know. But definitely keep the questions firing. Um, you know, that's, that's really important because as I said last night, you might ask a question that I'm not covering tonight that somebody else is watching and they might have the same question. So yeah, just fire away with that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to turn around now and I'm going to get onto Ableton so again I hope this works uh, fairly smoothly so I'm just going to switch over now bear with me you should see me pop down into the corner I think that one wait a minute there we go uh, just rearrange that a sec here we go and if we get Ableton up that's us sorted now I just want to get these comments over as well before I carry on so just arranging my screens guys okay think I've got everything as I need it now. Brilliant. So we can get cracking. Okay, so the browser, last night we touched upon the browser a little bit, but um, I just thought it needed a little bit more uh, covering tonight. Um, I don't tend to, and again, just uh, just to reiterate, I'm going to tell you how I use it. There's, there's hundreds of different um, ways of using the browser. Everybody's got their own certain way, but the only way I can tell you is the way I use it. Uh, good evening, Ben. How you doing, mate? Nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in again. Um, yeah, so the way I use the browser, I don't tend to favourite things or I don't tend to colour code things. I hope you can see my mouse and please, uh, you know, let me know if the volume's too low or anything else. If if you need to let me know uh, that you can, just let me know that you can hear me okay, basically. Um, yeah, I don't tend to use favourites or colour coding, but uh, moving down to the categories. If you look here, we've got instruments. So these are the bundled instruments that come with Ableton Live. Um, and again, I, before version 11, I was using the basic version. Since version 11, I've got into using analog and collision. Obviously the drum rack, because that's been in uh, pretty much every uh, version of Ableton since around, I think around version eight. Um, 
so yeah you've got your instruments there and then if you move down one you've got audio effects uh, I don't know if you remember last night if you weren't here then that's fine we've got reverb and delay on our return tracks here these are just stock Ableton effects and if you look in our reverb and resonance you can see that's the reverb plugin there and it's just a matter of dragging and, dro and dropping it onto this lower bar here um, thank you Scott brilliant I'm glad you can hear me mate um, yes so let me just get rid of that actually Hold on. there we go so yeah it's just a matter of dragging and dropping these effects onto the uh, onto the lower bar I've got selected here uh, my return track B so just for demonstration purposes I'm just dropping these on after that delay um, and that's just to show you how easy it is to just drop these effects on you've also got this really nice reverb that they've included in, in version 11 now which is called the hybrid reverb and it just sounds fantastic I'll show you that in a minute when I get a beat going but uh, yeah it's really quite sophisticated uh, you've also got uh, your, your EQs EQ8 is something that I use all the time just a really good clean EQ that you can get right in there and you can even use it as a high pass and low pass filter um, but yeah so easy to drag and drop and then if you move down on the browser you've got MIDI effects these are very useful if you and again we're going to talk about some of these in a little while um, because we were, we're talking about MIDI tonight so I'll try and demonstrate a few things in, in, in particular the arpeggiator because the arpeggiator is a it's a great tool um, and it's really useful for just coming up with with random ideas and just you know um, injecting a little bit of life in something that might be a little bit stagnant uh, max for live I'm not going to touch on tonight that's kind of an external third-party thing but it's kind of integrated within Ableton there whereas it used to be a separate thing um, there's a lot of uh, people that make their own max instruments and max audio effects that you can download from the internet uh, which are really quite good actually so worth a look moving on to the plugins folder so this is where your third-party plugins exist so as you can see I've got quite a few uh, synths and effects that I've bought over the years uh, on a Mac it's so easy to install them you just install them to the default position and they will show up on your plugins folder um, and again it's literally just a, a, a matter of dragging and dropping so if I wanted to use Omnisphere on this track uh, I would just pick it up drag it across and it will create a new MIDI track for me and there I am I'm away with Omnisphere uh, and if you're familiar with Omnisphere you'll realize how powerful it is if you're not familiar with it you ought to go and have a look at the demo on the website because it is absolutely fantastic um, okay so that's your plugins folder that's that's quite an important one to get your head around really um, there's loads of great free synths and stuff you haven't got to spend a fortune on synths I am going to just concentrate on the stock plugins tonight uh, but this is just to give you a rough idea clips this is great because you've got um, pre-programmed drum kits pre-programmed synth sounds and you can kind of just click on them so say if I wanted an 808 kit if I just click on that not double click just one single click just let me know that you can hear that guys you should be able to hear it hoping you can hear that all that's doing is every time I click on one it's um, it's giving me a really nice preview So if I wanted the 808 kit, for instance, like the sound of that. Oh, by the way, I'm cancelling it uh, by using the escape button on the keyboard. Um, volume's perfect. Nice one. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Nice to see you again, Luke. Thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, so first of all, let me just get rid of Omnisphere here. You can see it created a new track. I'm just going to right click on that and press delete. And now... I quite like the sound of that 808 kit, so I'm going to drag it across. Drag it onto a blank space and it will create a new track. Okay, now that pattern that we previewed is already pre recorded. As you can see, there's MIDI notes already there, and we touched on this a little bit last night, but I'm just going to play it for you. 
You'll notice the tempo is lower. That's because I've, I've purposefully turned it down to 113. 127 is a bit quick for me these days. Okay, so on this clips page on the browser, just sticking with the browser just for a second, you've got some great sort of um, inspiration sounds really. You know, you click on these and think, well, I like the sound of that. That might work in my track, or I could imagine something else working with that. Maybe not so much these chords, but you get the idea with the beats and everything else. It's just a nice way of starting with something that's not just a blank canvas. Um, and then we're going to move down to samples. Again, it's very similar. If you just click on one, you know, you can, you've got single shot samples there for a drum kit. Build your own drum kits up. Um, you've also got things like loops. And again, you know, you can spend hours just going through these and thinking, well, that'll work in my track or maybe not. Um, now, grooves is something that I don't tend to use a great deal, only because if I want to inject a bit of groove into a drum beat, I kind of do it by ear rather than putting a whole groove over something. For some people, this is kind of a go-to thing. Um, you probably know people swear by the timing of things like an Akai MPC and, and the grooves with an MPC. You know, a lot of hip-hop artists use them. Use them and they'll use a certain amount of groove or quantize. Well, you've got all of those templates in here. If you look down there, you've got the swing for an MPC 3000. You've got different degrees of swing. And again, it's a really useful thing. I'm not gonna go into it tonight because, um, like I said, I just wanna get into the basics of programming a, 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 a beat. Uh, but it's something that I will touch on in the main course. Um, just to explain to you as well, all of this, this three day, uh, these, these three day sessions, they're all part. They're all going to be part of, of a main course that I'm going to be putting online. So um, please register your interest for that. There's a, there's a link in the description. You can just click on the on the uh, on the link, pop your email address in, and I'll keep you up to speed with what's going on with all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to touch on that tonight. Templates again, I'm not going to touch on that so much. This is an interesting spot down here. Places. Um, as you can see, I've got a folder called ASH on mine, so that is just short for all songs here. And a friend of mine uh, gave me that tip years and years ago. Ian, if you're watching, that's you. So I always use that now. Whenever I'm starting to, maybe I've got I've got a fresh computer or whatever, I'll put an all songs here folder on every track or every project that I work on goes into that folder, so I know exactly where it is and I know where I can back it up. Um, Okay, my music library, that's just tracks I've got. Sample library, that's where all my samples sit, all my um, breakbeat samples. I've got house samples in there, I've got hip hop. Uh, but you've got another folder here called add folder. So you can kind of, you can customize this places section uh, to hold things that you use quite often. Like for me, for instance, I use this dirt and layers fo uh, folder. And if I just open that, you can see it's there now, and I can just access it whenever I want, just straight from the browser. Just makes things so much easier. Um, by the way, this Dirt and Layers folder is great for layering drum sounds, so you might want a bit more sub on a kick drum that you found. There's, sub, there's a subfolder in there, etc., etc. So that's a great tool to use. Okay, so that's covered the browser a little bit. I just wanted to get out of my system because I, I realised last night that what you know, while, while we did an hour, I kind of skimmed over the browser a little bit and it did just deserved a little bit longer so that's why I've done that hope that was okay for you um, but yeah it's worth getting your head into the browser as much as you can and finding your own way of working with it because it's 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 a, a really great powerful uh, tool that's part of Ableton okay so getting on to MIDI now as you can see I've got a blank project here right so the first thing I'm going to do and, and to demonstrate working with MIDI on Ableton we're just going to create a basic beat, okay? So uh, I think what we'll do is we'll go onto drums. I'm going to use a, I'll tell you what we'll do. I like that 808 core kit, so I'm just going to drag that, pop it onto that first track. Now, if I double click on there, you will see that I've just created a one bar loop. So anybody that was watching last night, you, you remember 
you can zoom in and zoom out. If you move above that loop brace, see it changes to a magnifying glass, you can zoom in and out of there. Now because this has already got the sounds on, and that's why I've chosen this so that we can just get cracking with it really, you can see on the left hand side it's going to give me the name of the sample that's on our um, drum rack. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start painting in a few drum notes. Now I'm going to just double click on these. I'll show you another way to do that in a minute. Now obviously working with MIDI, if you've got a drum, if you've got um, if you've got a MIDI controller, you could play these notes in. So I'm just you can't see it at the moment, but I'm I'm actually just hitting the keys of my keyboard now. And as you can see, when I'm hitting them, you probably heard me actually battering the keys more than the drum beat. But uh, as I'm hitting them, you know, we're getting we're getting flashes of, of the corresponding sound to the corresponding key. Right, but just for ease of use, and I'm going to do this quite quickly. Uh, I think Scott asked me last night, how do you go about, no, it wasn't Scott, it was Ed, how do you go about painting things in, right? So I will do this again in a minute with a drum kit that we're going to make up, but just for ease of use now, it's literally a matter of um, double click, or you can use this icon here, which is the pen, and you can just drop them in like that. If you don't like where it is, you can just click on it again, and off it goes. Okay, so I'm going to stick with the pen for the time being. And by the way, the, the keyboard shortcut for that is B, right? So if I press B now, you can see it goes off. Press B again, it goes on. I hope you can see that, guys. Just up there in the top right-hand corner, B, pen is off. That means I have to double-click. B, pen is on. That means I can just single-click. Okay? So... I'm just going to get rid of these and do it again, right? So we're going to just start from scratch. And I've put that on beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. So it's a straight four, four beat. Okay. Now, if I look over to the left hand side, I've got my closed hi hat. Let's put that on an off beat. Let's put a double one at the end. Now again guys, just to reiterate, look out for the icon changing because I want to just make that a little bit bigger. Just one sec. I want to just make that a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing. And in fact what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop my headphones on as well. I can't quite hear what's going on in here. Okay, that's better. Right. Yeah, so if uh, if you hover above this loop brace here, this blue line, um, we can kind of just move that up and down and just give ourselves a little bit more real estate there so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to do the same on this line here. Can you see where it says velocity down there? And again, you know, if you know what that is, brilliant. But if some people might not, so I'm just going to talk you through it. Velocity is basically, it's the speed that something's hit. But in our case, think of it more as the pressure, how hard you're hitting it. So if I turn that hi-hat down on velocity, can you hear the change? Hang on. I'm going to just check, take that off um, pen and just drag it. There we go. So now already, just with that little adjustment, it gives you a bit more feel. Let's get a hand clap in then. Double click. Okay, easy enough. Let's try a, a low tom. Sounds all right. Okay, I'm going to leave that there for a sec, right? So, this is one tip I'm going to give you now, which is the way I, I normally work with this. If I'm trying to just sketch out a beat, um, Obviously, a one-bar beat's not very interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to just double it up, right? And the, the quick way of doing that is if you click 
and, and again if you weren't watching yesterday I talked about the loop brace basically the loop brace is this section here it's on the arrangement page which is the other page but it's also on these midi clips as well so you can kind of drag the loop brace and, and just loop around that section if you want and you see how it's just looping that, that sort of two beats let's take it back to the beginning but the thing is if I if I highlight that that's going to that's going to select everything that's inside. So if I press Command and D now, what's going to happen is, instead of a one bar loop, we're going to have a two bar loop. Command and D is duplicate, right? D for duplicate. And it's Command on a Mac. I think it's Shift on a, on a PC. So now you can see we've got, if you look at the number there, that's number one, number two, bar two that is. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. There we go. So now what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit more variation on the, on that second bar. So let's put a, in fact, let's play it and then we can, we can kind of work as we're going along. I think if we put a, it's nice. Not too keen on that, so we just delete it. Okay, we'll have that. So that's two bars. Now if we do it again, obviously, we're going to end up with four bars, aren't we? So, highlight the loop brace. Command and D. Now we've got a four bar loop. And what I'm going to do at the end of the four bar loop, I'm just going to highlight using our loop brace. Can you see how it changes to a bracket? Then we can just drag it across. Now I'm just going to loop that fourth bar. Let's put another bit of variation on it. Okay, as you can see, all I'm doing really is I'm listening to one bar and I'm just adding a bit of variation with the hi hats here, but I'm going to put an extra kick in as well, I think. Maybe an extra clap. Let's just try that, see what it sounds like. Okay, I'm going to turn that clap down, just highlight it, bring the velocity down, there we go. Now obviously we're just listening to that fourth bar now, so let's just take that back and listen to the whole four bars. Okay, so you can see very quickly we've gone from, well what have we done, we've, we've dragged over the 808 kit, we've put it onto a blank space, we've started painting in the kick drum over one bar, you know, we've added some hi-hats, we've added a clap, we've added a bit of tom, we've duplicated it to two bars, little variation there with the, the maracas, and then we've duplicated it again and we've put a, a sort of a semi... Um, fill if you like there but I ain't going to stop there I don't think I, I think we need to go eight bars don't we really uh, I've got the bug now so <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to just highlight the four bars again and you can check right so if it's not running in time right check your loop brace because sometimes you know I see people and they've played something in and, and Ableton's captured it but they're wondering why why is it not working why is it not looping and it'll be something like you know and it'll be like that and they'll be thinking well why is it going out of time all the time now if you look over here over to this section here it will actually tell you what's going on so the position of it is 1.4.4 that's where the start point is so the loop the, the loop brace start point is we want that on bar one beat one don't we and then it's going over two bars so we want that we actually want it on four, but if you did want it on two, that would have to say two. So let's just knock it up onto four. Now, again, right, that's just a nice way of checking. I always just use the brackets. You can see where you are, you know what you're doing, and it's just dead easy. Okay, 
So just get you. I think just get used to that. Find your own way of doing it, but that to me has always been the quickest way. Okay, so we're going to just we're going to do an eight bar loop. So let's just command and D that then. Highlight the loop loop brace so it's turned black. Command and D. There we go. We've got a nice eight bar loop. So we're going to go. First of all, I want to put a little bit of variation on this second. Uh, the bar five because I, ju I just think you know it's going to start to sound a bit static otherwise. That'll do. Nothing drastic. We can go in and just shift one of those maracas if you want. Get rid of that one. Do a few random little things and let's just see what sounds nice. But at the end, let's go a little bit mad. Let's put a little snare roll in. So again, I'm just going to zoom in with my uh, magnifying glass just above the loop, loop brace look. So I'm on the loop brace. I'm on the magnifying glass. Okay. Now I'm just going to loop over this eighth bar. Let's lose the kick drum. Right, and then we're going to put a snare roll in. Okay, sounds all right. But what we can do, if I, and again, this is on a Mac, so um, I'm not quite sure what the shortcut for this. It might be shift on a PC. But I want that snare drum to come in gradually in volume. So I'm going to just use um, velocity here. And if I hold command down and I'm over that one little note, holding command down gives me control of the velocity just with the left slider on my mouse. Okay. Without the left slider on my mouse, I haven't got that number, right? So you can see the number come up. If I just left click and then pull down, I can get the velocity where I want. And let's just do that in increments, just getting slightly louder. Your bog standard 808 snare roll. Go through and let's see what that sounds like. I'm going to take the claps off. Okay, now for me, that snare is a little bit quiet in the mix, right? So, as we're on the program in the beats, I know this is about MIDI, but you will be practicing this, I hope, uh, using the drum rack because it's probably the easiest thing to get your head around. If you look at the track there, and you can see that little triangle. Now I know this looks complicated, but what that gives us is access to the volumes of each individual sound. So if you look, you can see the little play button. Now I'm just keeping an eye out for when that snare hits and I've found it there, right? So if you watch, you can kind of see where it is. I can solo that if I want to. Or I can mute it. But what I'm going to do, and this is the beauty of the browser again, I'm just going to come out of that. I'm going to get an audio effect. I'm going to click on dynamics, grab a compressor, drop it onto the snare. And let's just get our pattern back up so you can see what's happening. Okay, now with the snap with the compressor. I want to just gain some level, but I'm going to compress it slightly, just bringing the threshold down. That's brought it up a little. Okay, cool. Right, that'll do. Let's go back to our pattern. And again, watch for the zoom. I'm just zooming in and out using that uh, magnifying glass. Bring that back. And then we should have our eight bar pattern. I'm just going to close this down as well because it looks messy when it's still open. So again, it's a nice way of just keeping things tidy, really. Uh, and so here's the eight bar pattern. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, that sounds all right to me. So you've got we've basically got an eight bar pattern there, which there's a little bit of change in it. It's still a little bit static. 
Uh, but as we stick into MIDI tonight, um, that's what that, that's what we're going to do. What I would normally do now is start to drag a few little loops over, maybe a bit of percussion, and start to spice it up a little bit. Um, you know, you think of these bits as your kind of main ingredients, and then little bits of loops and little bits of noises, your spices and your herbs and all that kind of stuff. If that makes sense. I think it does. But there you go. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do now, I'm just going to quickly show you. We've got one clip going there, right? So if I duplicate, if I, again, I'm going to use duplicate again, right? So if I right click on, on the actual clip and click on duplicate, and by the way, if you look to the right of that, it will tell you the uh, keyboard command for it too. I'm just going to click on that and it will be exactly the same pattern as the one that we've got at the top, right? But let's just say, for instance, I just want a, a one bar pattern I'm just going to drag that up. Let's zoom back in. But this time, I want pretty much the same pattern, but I want 16th hi-hats. Let's press B for our pen and make it a bit quicker. There we go. Just a one bar pattern, just hi-hats. Let's see what it sounds like. Cool. Right, so... What I'm going to do, I'm going to very quickly just click the metronome on. This is something that we went through last night, but for those of you who, are not, who weren't tuning in last night, this is quite a useful thing as well. Um, I'm just going to stop all those click, uh, clips. Right, now obviously that metronome is really, really loud, especially in my headphones. So I'm just going to use this button, this um, control here, which is normally for headphones, but in this instance, it's for your metronome. Okay, so just get that to a comfortable level. All I'm going to display for you now is um, the way that we've got the global global quantization set here, which is, again, I know it's a mouthful. All that means is we've told Ableton that when we can hear one bar, even if we click the next clip out of time, it will click back in time on that one bar. So I'm just going to quickly show you that now. Okay, we're going to go through eight bars. And while the eighth bar's running, I'm just going to click onto the next pattern. There we go, it's flashing. And you can see it just kept in perfect time. Okay, so uh, I hope that's been clear for you, that one. Just to go through something else as well though, if, if I wanted the rest of the pattern, the rest of the eight bars, but I still wanted those 16th hi-hats. What we can do, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this. If I just click to the right of those hi-hats, right, and I'm just going to hold my left button down, I'm going to just, this is called rubber banding, would you believe? <laughs> so imagine that you kind of, you know, you kind of putting a rubber band around a load of matchsticks or whatever. Um, yeah, so we've basically just selected that little section there. Now, if I hold, uh, if I hold Alt and drag them to the right, you can see I've picked every single one of them up, and I can drag them onto the next section, and the next section, and so on and so forth. Um, you can use duplicate for this, but sometimes it will knock it out and you sometimes end up creating a little bit more work than than you needed to. Let me just get rid of that one on the end. So let's listen to that as an eight bar now. Now if I wanted to go back to the original one, There we go. So you've got the two patterns working together there. Um, very quickly, I'm going to try and go over to some bass now. And guys, don't forget, if you've got any questions or whatever, please let me know. Um, I have got my eye on the comments. So just keep in contact with me. Hang on a minute. So it was hold on. Yes, Ian has just asked me if that was holding on to the alt button while it was being dragged. Yes, it was. Yeah. Um, 
the all the the alt and command have, they've all got different functions when you're using the left mouse button but yeah that was definitely holding on to the alt and and again you kind of get used to it it's a bit it's a bit weird having to kind of um look at what i'm doing with that as well because you sometimes do it second nature and then you have to you know having to look at it and, and sort of say uh, yeah that was the alt or that was the command but yes definitely that was alt all right okay so what i'm going to do I'm going to try and get a little bass line going with our beat now because I actually quite like the beat. So I'm just going to pull that down a little bit. And we're going to go onto our instruments on the browser. I'm, I'm going to use Analog. It's a really, really nice um, stock a uh, Ableton instrument. Got some great sounds on it. And I'm just going to click on bass. And again, you can see I'm just dragging that across so I can see a bit better. And if we just. I hope you can hear that, guys. Okay. There we go. I like that one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag that onto this MIDI track. And again, you just pick it up, hold the left uh, key down, pick it up, drop it on, and that will be our sound. Now... I have got my uh, MIDI controller rigged up to this, so I can actually play something in. But just so that if you know, if any of you guys haven't got a controller yet and you're just completely working just purely on Ableton, this is why I'm showing you this tonight. Obviously, with the main course, I will go through all of the configuration about MIDI controllers and 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 more to do with playing stuff in. This is really just a taster. So if this is interesting to you, you know, if it's if you know, if you're enjoying it and you've, you're getting some information from it, please register for the course because it, it will be up and ready soon. And um, it'd be great to sort of have, have you on board on that. As soon as I, as soon as I can, I can give you give you updates and let you know what's going on with it. So yeah, just uh, make sure you register for that as well, please. Okay, so I'm just going to do the same as I did before. Really, double click on that empty slot. Uh, these are called slots, by the way. So little bit of terminology there that when there's something in there it's called a clip the empty ones are called slots okay so again I'm just gonna pull that up now if I click on my keyboard I can kind of see where I am there and we're gonna again we're gonna start with a one bar loop right so let I'm just gonna play our drum beat I'm gonna probably turn the drum beat down so I can hear the bass a bit better And I'm just going to start painting some stuff in, really. You know, sometimes... There we go. Now I know I went a bit quiet then, right? <laughs> but what basically the way I work with that is I'm I'm kind of listening for, and I do come up with bass lines like this. This is a method that I use all the time. You know, it's it's not all about being a keyboard player or or being able to play fancy chords or be able to play, you know, amazing runs on the on the synth. Sometimes it's literally just a matter of getting a decent sound, getting a dr decent drum beat going. And finding the space in the dr in the in the beat where you think the bass might sit, you can always elaborate on it afterwards. But it's all about trying to get that groove going first. And you you, you saw how quick that was. Then I'm, I'm literally just listening, listening to and, and putting a few notes in and thinking, okay, well that kind of works. That doesn't work. That does. That doesn't. You know, it's probably not going to end up being the full bass line, but it's a starting point, and that's what you're looking for at this stage. So if I click on that now. Okay, we can work with that. So again, I'm going to duplicate it. Click on the loop brace, Command and D, and then we've got a two-bar loop rather than a one-bar loop. So just listening through to that bass line, I think that this note here is too prominent in that first bar, but it will work in the second bar. So I'm just going to delete that and see what happens. That's all right. It's a bit of variation, and you know, again, you can go to town with a variation on a bass line. Um, a two-bar pattern is going to create 
an idea of what kind of groove you're trying to go for um, but eventually you might want to put more variation in it but for what we're doing now I think it kind of works all right so I'm just gonna play that again also that sound is very dry at the minute now remember I said that we've got a delay on one of our return tracks I'm just gonna send that to the delay Sounds all right. I just want to adjust the delay as well. There we go, sounds a bit better. We've also got reverb if we want it. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the drums up a touch. And now I'm gonna move on to the second pattern of our drums after the fill. Okay, well, I think that sounds alright actually. I might keep that. <laughs> um, right, listen, I, I'm aware of time again now. It's it, it's quarter past eight, and I want I definitely want to get some um, some comments going, guys. So I'm going to kind of leave it there. There's so much more that we can talk about. <laughs> Thanks, it is already sounds like a beast. I'm, I hope you're talking about the uh, the, the track and not me. <laughs> Thanks, mate. It does, yeah. I think I might keep that. Um, I mean, we could talk about this all, you know, all night long, but I've got to finish somewhere and there's so much more I could show you with the MIDI stuff and I will do, but I will be doing that again. Like I say, I'm not trying to keep pushing this. I really don't like doing that, but just sign up for the course. Just sign up. For, for, you don't have to sign up for the course. Just give me a, a, an email so I can keep you up to speed with what's happening and then you can decide whether it's for you or, or, or whether it isn't. So, you know, just just do that and... and um, It'd be great to be able to keep in contact with you and let you know what's going on with everything anyway. Um, so I hate to leave it there because there's so much more I want to do, but I'm going to have to, I think. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to come away from this side now. Just bear with me for one sec, and let's get back onto here so you can see me again, and I can see you again. I think. Well, I can see the comments again. I think. There we go. So yeah, um, that's an introduction to MIDI on Ableton. Uh, and, and again, can you just let me know that you can hear me okay as well, guys? I just want to make sure that I ain't missing anything out here. Uh, just give us a thumbs up if you can hear me all right. Um, the, and I said this at the start of the session, really. The thing with Ableton is the way I've used it and the way I've developed my methods of using it is there's so many different ways that you can... Uh, approach a problem if you've got an idea not a problem an idea in your head if you think well how do I do this or how do I do that I guarantee you there's more than one way of doing it with Ableton Live it's absolutely without question right so it's about choosing how you use it um, I've come up with with a workflow that can't, that, that works for me but it, it kind of it's molded itself really because I've, I've added loads of hard thanks Ben thanks for the thumbs up I've added loads of hardware and loads of different external effects and all kinds of stuff, so I've had to get it to mold to my to my way of working. Um, you know, that's not to say that I haven't done tracks just using Ableton. I have. I've done plenty. There was a while where the, the studio was kind of packed away, and and I had to, you know, I had to just use Ableton and, and a pair of headphones, and a little MIDI controller, and it's more than it's you know you more than capable of coming up with great results just doing that. Um, but yeah, with Ableton and with the MIDI part especially, you know, it might look like I'm kind of rushing through things and I hope it doesn't and I hope it was quite clear what I did. Um, but, you know, if you do want to ask any questions about it, if you, you just feel, just fire away, now's the time. We've got like another 10 minutes or whatever, if unless everybody's bored. <laughs> um, but yeah, just fire away with the questions. So... What have we learned today? I think we've, we've, we've gone over the browser a little bit more, uh, which I thought was important. We needed to do that because I, th I kind of left that in the lurch a little bit last night. Um, and as you can see, as we were working tonight just with the MIDI stuff, um, you're constantly going to the browser, you're constantly picking things up and dropping them in. 
So it's really important that you get your head around how that works and play around with the places and, and put your own little custom folders in as well. Um, also the user library, as you start to uh, save presets on your, on your effect settings or your synths, you know, you can save that and it will end up in your user library, which is, which is a, a great way of working. Um, so yeah, we touched upon that. And then we started on the MIDI. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Scott has just asked me a question. Oh, by the way, these questions, as you type them, it might take a, a little while for them to come through to me. So just bear that in mind as well. Okay, Scott, so would you recommend any MIDI controllers? Absolutely, right? So I'm gonna show you one actually, just one sec. Right, so I worked on a project with a good friend of mine, Tim Wakefield, a project called the Switch Project. And I've still got one of these, Tim, by the way. I think you need it back <laughs> if you're watching or if you ever do watch. Um, I bought this. Well, I bought a few of these because we were, t we were working with kids uh, who were being you know, excluded from school and we were doing music tech with them. And we got these, must it be 11 years ago, 10 or 11 years ago now? And we paid then 55 quid for them. And they came with a set of headphones. They act as a, a, a USB interface. You could probably pick one of these up now on on eBay for 30 quid. This is covered in dust and stuff, but I still use it. I still, every, you know, sometimes if I go away on holiday or whatever, and I just want a little just want a little setup, set my laptop, take one of these, and I'm what, and that's it, that's all I need. Um, in terms of new ones, uh, there's some amazing stuff out there. It, it, it all depends on, on your budget, really. Look at the big names. Look at Novation, M-Audio, Akai, um, Native Instruments. Probably they're the big four. But then you've got Arturia and all kinds of stuff. All depends on your budget. And, you know, a lot of these controllers, they come with bundled software. So that's something to look at as well. Um, in terms of getting yourself a, a small setup, look for a little 25-key um controller something that you can pound away with it with, with the drums or play a few notes in if you're looking for something a bit bigger you know get yourself a a, 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 a one with bigger keys 49 key 61 key something like that but they're all very very good these days you know um i, I remember you know having to spend a fortune on on controllers and uh you know they were very very cumbersome and very very heavy so you can get some great stuff these days. So I hope that's answered your question there, Scott. We can be a little bit more specific. I know you, you, you're going to send me a, a bit of an email next week um, about your setup. So once you've gone down the line a little bit, give me a little email and I'll try and send you a few little links or something. And, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, hang on a minute. Ben's asked me a question. How much is the beast worth behind you, buddy? Now, are you talking about the beast that's on the other monitor? Because that's still me, mate. And I'm priceless. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Sorry. Right, okay. You're talking about the Moog Matriarch, aren't you? So, I'm a big Moog fan, as you can tell, by the Moog tattoo on my left arm. Um... I think I paid just over two grand for it, but I did chop in another Moog, so I don't feel quite so bad about that. Uh, so it, I think it's just over two grand, and I'll be completely honest with you, the one that I sold, I absolutely adored. It was very, very hands-on, very, it was a sub 37, and um, it was a, it's, it's a great synth. I sold it to a very good friend of mine, John Nash. He was in a brilliant band called Methods. You must check them out from Wolverhampton, by the way. Um, and then I chopped that in, he's got it now, and then I bought, um, hang on, this Moog Matriarch, and because it's semi-modular, it's it, it's a lot more complicated to use. It's um, once you've made a patch, that's it. That patch is there, and then once you've obviously with a modular system, once you've taken all the patch cables out, that's it. The patch is gone again. There's a lot to be said for that, and I do like it, but I also quite like to save my patches. So, although I love it and it sounds absolutely incredible. Um, I'm still missing the other one a bit. <laughs> does, does that make sense? So yeah, that's that's the the story of the Moog Matriarch. All the Moog stuff's fantastic, you know. But and and I, and I do love it. But I I need to be able to sit down and have a good few days just on that Matriarch. And I haven't been able to do that yet, unfortunately. Um, hi Mike, how you doing? Stop laughing. <laughs> um, yeah, so. That's kind of it. I just want to tell you what we're doing tomorrow. Um, 
we're going to touch upon working with audio tomorrow. So uh, today has been about MIDI, obviously, and the browser. Tomorrow, we're going to look at how Ableton treats audio. And again, it kind of sets Ableton apart from anything else that I've ever used. It might be different now, but I'm so stuck in Ableton now, I don't really touch any other doors. So it might be that, um, you know, people have kind of caught on to, to the way it works. Uh, and it's a really interesting way of working with audio files, uh, whether they be little one bar loops or four bar loops of a, a drum beat or a bit of singing or, or a, a guitar or whatever it is, or a full track. I mean, obviously, for those people that know me, I do do quite a lot of edits as well. And um, Ableton is just indispensable for edits for me. You know, I can work on pretty much any track, get it into Ableton, get it all warped up, and I'll talk about the terminology tomorrow on tomorrow's session, um, and then start putting my own stuff over the top. So, yeah, we'll we'll be going through some of that tomorrow. Uh, and again, you know, I know I'm kind of skimming through things, but, but this course really is all about giving you a taste of what my full course is going to be like. Uh, and it won't be hour-long videos like this. Everything will be broken down into short, bite-sized pieces so that if you need to look at, back at something, you'll be able to find it on the menu uh, and you'll be able to click on it. And once you've bought that resource, you've got it for life. So, you know, it'll be there. It'll be yours forever. So, you know, it's uh, it's, it's going to be worth doing, I think. And I'm, I'm going to be, well, I, I'm already very proud of it. Still got quite a bit of work to do on it yet, but it will be ready soon. So please reg register your interest on that. Um, the the uh, the address is in the links, so just have a little look at that. Uh, and I just want to say as well, um, and I said this last night, it's really great to see people on board with this and uh, giving me the chance to to not show off, but you know, kind of share my uh, share my knowledge if you like. And um, I really appreciate you tuning in and and giving me the chance to do that. Uh, it's nice to connect with people, although it's virtually. You know, we've had a pretty shit time really of late, so it's nice to sort of have a little bit of interaction with people and uh, and, and be able to do this. So uh, I thank you very much for that. And um, that's pretty much it from me tonight. So I just, again, I say thanks and hope you can join me tomorrow. Uh, you are allowed to bring a drink with you tomorrow. I know I will uh, because uh, I've been a bit nervy about it. I think it's gone all right. Uh, <laughs> so... I think tomorrow I might just have me a little whiskey while uh, while we, we're doing a bit of audio work. And on that bombshell, <laughs> I'm going to leave you to it and uh, have a wonderful evening. Share this with your mates. Tell people about it. Get people on board. And I will see you all, hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow, 7.30. All the best, guys. Thanks very much.